Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Hi Sir J, it's so nice to see you again. Well, as for me, it would definitely be the plant, plant, plant program here in my country. I want to share that to all the other queens and all the other people around the world because this is a very good project which deals with food security and also sustainability. So here in my country, it is a trend. We have this thing called plantitos and plantitas. And if I translate that in English, that's something like plant aunties and plant uncles. So I hope even though that we don't have a plant, plant, plant program worldwide, we would embrace this in our country for it to be a trend. And even if the restrictions are lifted and the pandemic and I hope we continue this hobby, this this light in our heart to plant because it does make a difference to regrain Mother Earth. And I'm just so proud of Department of Agriculture, an organization that I am working with for coming up with that project. Thank you, Sir J. Thank you so much, Miss Felipe. Um, people are actually accusing Miss Earth as a pageant that is only about planting trees for publicity. How can you prove them wrong? Wow, I could definitely prove them wrong by simply, I know my Eco Angel sisters, even though that we are in a virtual pageant, like we have this group chat in WhatsApp and I already know their dedication with the preservation of Mother Earth. So I really think these girls are just more than uh, what is seen our social in social media or them planting trees in our eco activities. They are honest with their advocacies and I see that. And you know when a girl is speaking, because I always watch their interviews, you know when a girl is speaking, it is very true. So I think the Miss Earth pageant and Carousel production is very wise to choose their delegates because they are so amazing and dedicated with the preservation of Mother Earth and that's what we all need right now. So kudos to all my sisters. You are so amazing and so genuine. Yeah, thank you, Roxanne. And as regards to your advocacy as well, what do you think makes your advocacy unique from among the other girls? Well, I think it's unique in a way that I have a mother who is an environmentalist and I started urban planting as young as the age of six. And when people hear the word word planting, it, it sounds really basic, but yeah. It's a simple, very planting is a very simple word, but it sustains billions of lives. And that's what everybody has to know that before we, we, uh, we look at the bigger problems, we also have to see the little things that we could do because it's all about the little things. It could lead to a big change. And even with the simplest ways, we could make a difference. The lagang kalikasan ng Pilipinas, Miss Philippines. Wow, the lagang kalikasan. Thank you, Sir Tristan. I really love that question. Well, my advocacy is urban gardening and agriculture and it is now a trend and since a lot of young people are so into social media, I often post or uh, spread stories or my day about me planting how cool my pots are, how colorful they are, how, how this makes my room really pretty and that uh, planting can be cool too and for you to be able to sustain and grow a plant how cool is that for you to be able to give life and I I was so grateful being able to work with the Department of Agriculture because I was able to teach children and also special children the basics of planting and they were so cool they were even more some were even more good at it than me and uh, I just wanted to share our experience with the vermiculture that we we were uh, holding worms for yes. uh, for fertilizing the soil and it yes. was it was really fun. Like I told these children that it's don't be scared or don't fear to get down and dirty. This is a lot of fun. Planting is very cool, and I often tell them a story about Greta Thunberg, who is a young environmental activist. That she's a good example. And I when you tell children, oh, this is so cool. When when you're uh, an adult, they they start to believe if you educate them that way. So I really share them the story of Greta Thunberg, and she sets a really good example, and that the children are the. Uh, uh, our children holds the future, so we that that's good that they learn even just by urban planting. They already gained a lot, and that makes them happy. And what do not... you think is more responsible for pollution, people or the government, and why? Well, I really love this question because it was asked for during my interview, and I would uh, my answer was actually both because we have to be honest that both the, the individual people and the government has done detrimental 
effects to the environment. So it's more of working in solidarity and it's more of having collective efforts and learning from each other. It's a give and take uh, chance and we should all be equipped with that responsibility that we have a role to play. There is no planet B. And that's how I ended it during my interview. <laughs> Thank you. My question for you is, I'd like to know what motivates you to join this earth. Well, my de- my motivation is definitely that I am a daughter of an environmentalist. So even Oof. as young as the age of six, I already started planting. And my first trivia, my first tree that I planted was an apple tree. And when I was deciding for a pageant to join in, since I am very passionate about beauty pageants and I really see the essence of it, I, I thought of something that it has to be close to my heart. So if you advocate about something, it should be something you know about more. Because if I have been practicing this as young as the age of six, then I have more to share. And also with that, I am willing to learn more so I could give more. And that's a very fun experience so far and I wouldn't choose any other pageant. I think there's a pageant that is destined for each person and this Miss Earth is just for me. Thank you, for You well said. And I have another question for you. So uh, my final question is, do you think, since we are in the Philippines and we all know that our country is one of those that are identified to be overpopulated. So do you think overpopulation is an important environmental issue? Why or why not? Well, it's definitely one of the biggest environmental issues because we cause more pollution due to overpopulation. So I think it's just more about we have to have uh, family planning that should be important and we should be taught in school how to have these things for us to prevent uh, unwanted pregnancies since if we have this ed- if we are educated and we have this uh, we have family planning and we have this sense of control then we could lessen uh, population and uh, pollution as well so, Roxy um, I have been consistently visiting Baguio City and I have observed the drastic uh, effect of the so-called global environmental issue uh, known as global warming. So, how does your advocacy plant, plant, plant help prevent the enviro- this environmental issue? Well, definitely here in my city of Baguio, a lot of people would agree that a lot of trees are cut down and it's not as cold as it was then. And the air is not as, as fresh also as it was before. So I think that my advocacy is very relevant because other than the other potential benefits, I am more focused on the regreening part. So it's a good way towards sustainability. So just imagine if each of us at least plant, let's say, 30 plants in our home with the capacity that uh, that we could have. We could fully utilize our space to bring back life to Baguio City because I really miss I really miss what it's like when I was a little girl and the air air is fresh and I just hope we regreen Mother Earth. Also, I want to connect what is happening in the Amazon, in Australia, because uh, these are the areas holding a massive amount of where the oxygen comes from. So I just think that urban gardening and agriculture is a good step towards sustainability and it would give you so much potential benefits and even make you smile and boost your mental health. So I encourage everybody to start planting. May I know what is your favorite color? Ooh, it used to be pink, but now it is green. And I'm going to ter- tell the story of why it suddenly turned into green. Because during our Miss Philippines Earth journey, my final answer, the ending to my final answer was a green life is a better life. And that's what secured my win. I'll be forever grateful for that line and that color. That's why I don't mind like wearing green to any event. I think it's my lucky color. You know, you know, you feel it if it's, if it's just your lucky color. So I choose green. Wow. It's nice to know that we have the same favorite color. But the question, the reason why I asked that question, because I want also to know that how are you going to explain that color green to a person who doesn't like color green? Well, I know a lot of people who doesn't like green. I think it's not for everyone, I guess. But maybe I would encourage them to like it because this is the color of the environment. And our home, of course, other than blue, it's it's blue and green. So I want them to embrace uh, the greenness of Mother Earth because that is what gives us life. And it, it does give a better mood, like simply by having plants at your home. So do love green. Why not love green? Green is a great color. Oh, my question is, would you rather end hunger or hatred? 
Well, I would definitely end hunger. Sorry, because the Philippines, there are a lot of people who cannot eat three minutes a day. And I get very affected with this. That's why when I chose to partner up with an organization, it is definitely zero hunger Philippines. And I stand by that. I can cannot bear to see uh, my fellow Filipinos and also people around the world hungry. That's why I also chose my advocacy, Urban Gardening and Agriculture, because in this way, we could grow our own food through sustainability. And I think it if people will grow their own food at home then no one will grow hungry so i really want to send the message to everybody mostly in the philippines there's a plant 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 program giving away free seeds to fight hunger how do you think the pandemic has exacerbated the environmental issues that the country has has been facing well, I think we did have a lot of realizations because with the restrictions and us being at home, we suddenly see saw Mother Earth renew and this is the silver lining to it all. There's this saying that Mother Earth is healing. So I think we have this realization that the detrimental effects is caused by us. Now the skies are clearer, the air is fresher to be and now that we have a second shot, if after this pandemic we should continue even if restrictions are lifted we should continue mother earth letting mother earth heal because that's what she deserves <laughs> yeah. so how do you cope up with this new normal situation in the philippines especially in baguio city wow it's definitely new since i'm a very outgoing person but i definitely cope up with it through the love and support of my family and of course i have my pets to cheer me up and of course I have this habit, uh, this hobby that I shared with everyone earlier, which is planting that really does boost my mental health and give me uh, the sense of responsibility to look forward to more days. So I'm just really happy and productive. Also, now that I am competing in this Miss Earth pageant, I gave my entire 2020 for this entire dedication ever since I screened for Miss Philippines Earth in January and I couldn't be more happy and fulfilled. This is the best experience and this is the happiest I have been to advocate for Mother Earth through this pageant. So just a follow-up question. I know you're being emotional when you are talking about a natural disaster or typhoon. So in your opinion, um, why do you think God allows natural disaster to happen? Well, it's definitely we ha that we have to learn as human beings. We couldn't be blessed, just be blessed and blessed every day just for us to ab continue abusing it. So I think when we experience these certain things, this would give us that lesson to be better for the future and be more uh, walk lightly on earth this time. Now we still have a chance, we still have a shot, we are still breathing. So despite all the hindrances that we are going through right now, I hope this serves as a reminder for us to be better for the future and i hope everybody out there i hope that our global response to this pandemic is also the same response we have to climate change and the impacts because people in my country and around the world and the people in cagayan are really uh adversely affected and suffering because of our actions so all we have is now by 2030 our actions are irreversible that's a fact so we have to work in solidarity right now <laughs> So thank you very much. Uh, are you ready to win the third Miss Earth crown for the Philippines? Wow, I'm definitely ready. I feel like I waited my whole life for this opportunity. I shared earlier that ever since January, I already dedicated myself for this Miss Earth pageant. And I actually did drop my job because this, this pageant, this platform, this gives me the sense of fulfillment that I get to wake up in the morning with a purpose and go to sleep soundly at night knowing I made a difference. And it gives you more than the fame, more than anything that comes with the crowd. It's just the happiness every day, the fulfillment you get for being a spokesperson for Mother Earth. So I am ready. I did my best. I have a great team, great supporters. So I think I am ready. But I also wish all the girls good luck. I know whoever will win the crown will deserve it, whether that is me or not. Thank you very much, Roxy. That's all. Thank you for watching. And for more pageant news and updates, please don't forget to subscribe.